Uh, so the next talk uh, is from uh, Jose Daniel Lara, who works at the National Renewable Energy Lab, and he's going to talk us talk to us about uh, some of the work they've been doing uh, in Siena, uh, which is power simulations uh, redefined. Yeah. Well, thanks, Oscar. Yeah. So. Uh, this is uh, the presentation today is about how do we model this kind of idea of collocated facilities with jump. So just to give a quick plug uh, on the name changes, we have for the long time, maybe like six years now, maintained several packages in the Julia ecosystem to model power systems, both in operations and dynamics, and do plotting and different power flows. So basically, we are trying to create a, a large use and a scalable ecosystem of power systems modeling, and recently we renamed it Siena. Not the packages, but the capabilities that the packages contain. And today we're going to talk about the new capability we're creating that is called uh, hybrid, hybrid power, hybrid system simulations. So the first thing, you know, for most of the audience, what is a hybrid system? Hybrid systems is one of the largest growing types of technologies being installed in the U.S. right now. It's basically it's a new terminology to describe a behind the meter microgrid that transacts in the markets. You know, and they have different combinations that could include solar and storage, could include wind and storage, could include you know, other types of technologies like gas and storage, and it's basically a combination of different storage assets with different generation assets. Uh, these types of systems are, you know, again, there's about almost a terawatt in the queue right now to be installed in the US, and there's some, some questions um, that operators and utilities are having about how will these assets operate. And what we have been observing is that a lot of these assets will operate what we call algorithmically. There's actually not an operator behind trying to come up and down, but they will actually have be operated by essential optimization problems that run a portfolio of assets behind the meter. They do the trading in the market, and they, they decide how that operates. So for these types of systems, this uh, particular uh, project has been looking into three types of operation schemes to understand the impacts that they have in the system. So the first thing, oh, this is a. This is the lattice one. But, uh, so what we have right now is that a hybrid system actually is connected to a bus. We have our storage. We have our renewable asset. We have the grid. And we have a system operator that communicates with an energy management system that basically says, well, I put a bid in the market, and this is how you should deploy the assets behind the meter. So the operator doesn't have control necessarily over these assets. So the first operating model looks like this, where the, uh, the system operator actually has direct control through the EMS and can tell the, the, the uh, hybrid system owner how does he want the battery and the renewable to operate. And it's an optimization problem that looks like this. You want to minimize the total system cost. And I've split the X variables between the total system variables and the hybrid system variables. Right? So there's a set of system level functionality. Most of them are linear MILPs. And there's a set of constraints for the hybrid system. But critically, the operator is able to minimize the overall cost right, and communicates directly with the AMS. The second operating scheme is one that is closer to what we observe in practice today, where we actually have a hybrid system that wants to maximize a set of market transactions represented by Y. Those are bits into the market that are cleared by the operator. And it tries to balance out its internal cost of supplying its bits with the, uh, it basically tries to minimize the cost of, of providing that power with the bits that it generates, and it's subject to a set of constraints. So this model basically is a single operator. They send the bits, and it tries to balance out cost with the, the, the market transactions. And the latest model, the, the final model that we have, is a model where actually the, uh, the asset owner is contracts a separate company to make the market transactions, and the separate company uh, has to maximize its profits is a risk taker company that then doesn't have control over the EMS, but the EMS of the asset owner still receives the, the, um, the signal from the market. So in this case, we want to maximize the profits, but now we're subject to minimizing the cost of providing those uh, bits. How do we supply those bits? That's generally speaking the three types of models that we're seeing, right? So in the experimental setup that we have, what we have tried to do is to say, well, we're going to generate some price forecast create a bidding problem in Jump, pass those bits into a market clearing engine in Siena, then we can actually lock those bits or fix those bits and run again the real time to see how the hybrid adjusts to the updated bits and the updated forecast, run the adjustment period, and then compute the revenue part of the hybrid system. So 
one of the key elements of a hybrid system is the fact that it's flexible. So we want to be able to say, I made a bid in the day ahead with the forecast. Now I have to rechange my bid in the real time, given what I got awarded in the real time in the day ahead and the new forecast. So the first set of results are for energy only products. We're going to leave out ancillary services for now. So here, there's a lot going on in this plot, but because I only have 10 minutes, I put a lot in a single slide. And here we can see what the day ahead bidding result looks like. Uh, we can see here, this is the prices of the real time. This is the forecast issued at the day ahead time of the real time prices. So this is what the asset owner thinks is gonna happen in real time. So we can see it here charging the battery. And then this charging the battery when the prices are high, we can see the SOC going up and down. We can see how at particular hours, especially with negative prices, is charging the battery and in some cases actually turns on a thermal unit to charge the battery because it's convenient. And we can see how the battery gets discharged in these blue blocks precisely where the prices are the highest. Right, so we can see that the, uh, and then here we can see the interesting effect because there's such a price, uh, price negative value here, it actually decides to curtail the wind power and operate the thermal unit in order to charge the battery. And if we zoom in here, there we can see there's like a small increase in the use of the storage here, precisely because it's getting paid to consume power. Right? So that's basically what we can see from the day I had been in results. Now we can see the effect on prices. So if we actually take the centralized prices for the day ahead, which is this blue line, if the asset is operated by the operator, thinking that it has to do the best for the system with the first optimization model we see, we can see that the prices follow this blue line. Now, once the assets operate in the second model, where they can actually try to optimize their own benefit, uh, given the price forecast, we can see that they cause price collapses. And this is kind of like a QAQC that the model is doing the right thing, because this is what we observe in real markets. Uh, assets that try to maximize their profit usually tend to collapse the prices because they push power at the times of they're not convenient for the system, generally speaking. And then we can see the effect on the real-time prices. So again, this blue line is the forecast used by the asset to, pr to produce its bids. And we can see here the effect that it has in real-time prices also causing price collapses and some important differences reducing prices and then in, air, in hours when there's actually not that many renewables for the hybrid, we can see that the prices are well aligned. So here we can see the effect of the strategic bidding and algorithmic bidding in some of these uh, energy systems that operate in this fashion. So the, now we, we go into the co-optimizer. Now we're working on actually implementing the ancillary services market. So I don't have price results yet, but here we can see now a co-optimizer strategy that actually tries to allocate and see services products too. We can see here what the actual output power is and the, the preference for the price profiles that we have of providing regulation down reserves and a little bit of regulation up. And this is important to remember for some of the latest slides. So here we can see the asset basically preferring to bid on energy, bidding out in this red line, and then not providing too much spin reserves, right? So it provides spin reserves when it's charging the battery that it decides to actually acquire power. Now, the interesting thing that we're working on right now is this by level strategy and understanding the effects of a lot of the business models that are happening when these assets are leased to other operators. So we have this model that we had before where you know, we ha we're subject to some of the market constraints and we want to be subject to minimizing the cost of supplying this market value. So this is your classical you know, reformulation where we end up with this bilinear for the stationary conditions and the optimality conditions. And we implemented it uh, basically using SOS constraints and substituting here uh, both the stationary condition with the classical SOS format and implementing this additional code where we substitute the variable Y for the bits with the upper bounds of the Y to improve computational speed. And the outcome is we have the same result. And the reason for this actually is, uh, is part of the, or some of the conclusions that we're gonna arrive. And the reason why we see this is because uh, the value of this bilateral problem actually depends on the relative, relative effect that this Y has, uh, this Y has down here. Um, so if, the, because we can see that there's not that much market participation in the, in, in the ancillary services, then the relative value of changing the results because of that Y um, then is very minimal. 
So, and then we're working in new developments to integrate ancillary services offers and into the hybrid system and modeling the markets around that. And finally, this research was sponsored by the Department of Energy and the Grid Modeling uh, Lab Consortium under the Flex Power project. Thank you very much.